Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is the 22nd of April, Monday morning. Uh, a lot to cover here today. We're going to talk about droughts and tornadoes and, of course, our 2019 hurricane outlook at the end here. So worth hanging on here for a little bit longer today. Uh, looking at this week, 22 through 28 April, again, uh, wholesale change from a year ago. Warmest in 10 years nationally, second warmest in 30 years with almost the entire country with above average temperatures. Uh, looking at uh, precipitation here, again, haven't said this in forever, driest in 18 years, fifth driest in 30 years. Looks like a lot of rain out there, but on a national index scale, it's uh, actually on the dry side. So Texas will be the probably the wet spot and have to look out for some severe weather outbreak down there with some tornadoes here uh, in the southeastern part of Texas. Jumping ahead into, actually this gets in next week in early to May. Uh, again, similar to last year temperature-wise, fifth warmest in 30 years nationally. Uh, West Coast cools off quite a bit, uh, but most of the country still, again, well above average temperatures. Rainfall is wetter than last year and tenth wettest in 30 years, but that wet weather in the south shifts to the north. Um, if we look at the April temperatures across the world here versus last year, wholesale flip-flop. Last year, the U.S. was the coldest, second coldest and snowiest in 30 years. This year, we're, it looks like we're going to end up number five warmest in 30 years. So if you're enjoying the warmer April, um, again, the wholesale change from a year ago here in the U.S., Europe's gone the other way. Last year was the number two warmest in 30 years, and this year's quite a bit colder than last year, especially in Eastern Europe and uh, wettest in seven years. So flip-flop in the U.S. and Europe here this year in terms of April weather. Looking at the year-to-date rainfall across the country, um, again, what it's in 21 years nationally, obviously, 15% uh, above average, 6.4% more than last year. So several years of really wet starts of the year here in the U.S. Uh, greens on the map are above average, and peaches and browns are below average. You can see that dry weather from uh, New Mexico, Texas, and the southeast, and that's kind of reflected a little bit in the drought here. But drought nationally is epically low, only 14% of the country with uh, drought-type conditions. That's just historic lows. Uh, last year, about 43% of us had uh, drought conditions. You can see here in this chart to put that drought into perspective, with only 14% of us with a drought type condition, average is about 46%, and nowhere near the peak years of uh, 60 plus percent back in 12, 13, and back in the early 2000s. So this is historic lows here for drought. Uh, so again, lots of things will be growing this year. Um, so uh, get ready to do some mowing. Uh, we look at uh, soil temperature, soil moisture here this morning. Anytime you're above 50 for soil temperature, you will start to see your grass and flowers and trees break out. Uh, so pretty much most of the country's had that at this point. So if you're not mowing yet, you will be soon. Soil moisture on the left here, again, still shows pretty wet uh, there in Minnesota and Iowa and parts of the Mississippi River Valley. But uh, again, uh, drying out a bit, but uh, still on the wet side here uh, nationally. Looking at tornado count here uh, so far this year, we're nowhere near the, uh, the record pace. Um, which would be about 500 tornadoes uh, so far this year. We've only had about 237, which is kind of an average year. So we're not uh, historic low or high here in terms of numbers so far, but uh, kind of right in the middle of the pack. One thing that is kind of near historic lows is violent tornadoes. Uh, not entirely sure for the, the downward trend here, but uh, since 1954, since we've been keeping records here, um, violent tornadoes are at historic lows last year, uh, less than about 10. Um, so I'm not sure why that's the case, but again, at least the good news is the, the real violent ones like we saw back in the, in the 70s, 60s and 70s, have uh, been on somewhat of a downward trend here nationally. If we look at the uh, hurricane outlook, recall last year, we'll talk about our outlook here now for 2019. Last year, again, we, we were top of the heap. Uh, we went pretty bold, uh, went with 15 named storms. We projected two major landfalling events. Uh, both in those red shaded areas there were, again, this was the season ahead outlook for us and uh, nailed them, nailed Florence and Michael uh, where the landfalls hit. Uh, so we were pretty concerned last year and obviously um, we were top of the heap um, in terms of the, the averages of everyone. Um, one factor this year that we're looking at is obviously the El Nino type conditions. Um, it is a currently borderline weak moderate El Nino and that tends to create a little bit of shear, uh, sometimes a lot of shear in the Atlantic. Um, and again, if we look below the surface here, the chart on the right, uh, going down about 300 feet, uh, the waters are way above average for the entire equatorial Pacific. So this, this El Nino's got some, uh, some legs to, to go here. Uh, we think it'll probably peak in July, as most of the models indicate. And then begin to slowly weaken, but uh, maintain its uh, El Nino status, if you will, for, for much of the year. So this is one of many factors that we look into to, to make our 2019 outlook. Uh, this year, we're actually going to go the other end extreme of, of folks. We're going to go on the low end. Um, a lot of the, not a huge fan of analogs, but a lot of the data that we looked at uh, suggested this could be actually a, a below average season in terms of number of storms. So we are indeed going to go below average with 11. Um, 
AccuWeather's out there with 12 to 14, WeatherBell 10 to 15, Colorado State recently just last week said 13, and uh, average is about 11.7. Just because it's below average doesn't mean that we um, expect, uh, you know, we're going to get home free here. Uh, we are very worried about South Florida from the Keys to, say, uh, uh, Cape, Cap Cape Canaveral, uh, Florida, Miami in particular. That's uh, one of our highest risk areas uh, this season, so we've shifted it from the Carolinas and the Panhandle down to the southeast part of Florida this year. Uh, the Bahamas are a big threat, uh, Turks and down to Turks and Caicos, maybe uh, eastern Cuba, Haiti, um, certainly our high-risk areas. Bermuda's not out of the wood either this year. I think some of those Cape Verde storms that come off Africa later in the season will pose a risk to Bermuda. Um, moderate risk uh, would be our call there. So, again, uh, maybe an overall down season, but as they always say, it only takes one. Uh, and we think the one's probably going to be somewhere down there in uh, southeast Florida. Um, Took the little one uh, after church on Sunday. Uh, she had her first lollipop at church. They gave her a red one, and uh, her tongue turned red. And who knew that could be so fun? Um, she had, had never seen that happen before. So she was uh, quite the giggly little one here this week. Of course, did the Easter egg hunt, uh, and then uh, took her to the park and uh, just had an absolutely fu fun time there. Uh, swings were scary just a few uh, few months ago, and now they're the best thing on earth. Uh, so. Uh, had fun at the park, uh, swinging with uh, Mommy, um, so There's enjoyed Bobby. the warm weather, Whee! even though there wasn't a ton of sunshine, but uh, had a great uh, great Easter park? weekend. Hope you did as well. So with that, folks, we hope you have a great week, and we will be back here this time next week.